In this video, we're gonna cover using the getting things done methodology along with the Tick Tick app in order to boost our productivity and stay organized. Hello, I'm Joshua Best. Let's begin by understanding what getting things done is. Getting things done, commonly known by the acronym GTD, is a popular productivity methodology that was developed by David Allen. He first published his book, Getting Things Done, back in 2001. Since then, it has gained a significant and dedicated following. The core GTD methodology involves five steps, and they're each equally important. Number one, capture. Number two, clarify. Number three, organize. Number four, reflect. And number five, engage. I highly recommend reading the book if you haven't. And if you have, go back and reread it. It's one of those books where every time you pick it up, you find something new. David Allen uses a lot of analog tools like physical inboxes and physical file folders for his approach. But he has revised the book a couple of times to try to bring it into the modern world. And the approach is really tool agnostic, meaning you can use whatever tool or apps you like whether they be digital or analog. And what we'll find is we probably need both. So let's start with a blank tick tick system and see if we can't use what David Allen has developed and build our own GTD system in tick tick. The first step is capture. The idea here is that we get everything out of our head and into our system, specifically anything that we need to do or anything we need to decide on, but also just anything that's in our head taking up precious mental space. David Allen emphasizes that your brain is for thinking, not for remembering. So where do we put these things that we capture? Well, the Tick Tick Inbox seems to be a good place. The Tick Tick Inbox is designed for quick capture, and we can use things like global keyboard shortcuts, the Tick Tick mobile app, you can forward emails into Tick Tick. There are a number of ways to get that stuff into your inbox. However, what many people forget is that only a portion of our lives is in that digital world. We also live in a physical world with physical objects. What about that camera that's batteries have died? What about those business ideas you wrote down in your notebook? And what about that grocery list you started on that sticky note? It's important that we capture everything into our system, because if you don't, you won't trust that your system has everything you need to do or decide on. This is where I think it's important to have a physical inbox as well. These physical notes, lists, and even devices that need their batteries changed, for example, go right into your physical inbox so that they're captured. So for the capture step, we really need two inboxes. Our Tick Tick inbox will be our primary, but we also need a physical inbox to make sure that we capture everything into our system. The second step is clarify. During this step, we'll go through each item in our inboxes, both our TickTick -tick inbox and our physical inbox, and get clarity. At this time, we should go through our physical inbox and add those items into our TickTick -tick inbox so that we have all of our items in one place. We can use the Tick Tick mobile app to take a picture of the grocery list on a sticky note and add that picture to a task in the Tick Tick inbox. Or simply create a task called camera batteries to remember to get new batteries for our camera. Once all items are in our Tick Tick inbox, we then need to ask a couple of questions. The first question is, does this require any action? The answer might be no. You've captured something, but it's really not a task to complete. Maybe it was something you wanted to remember or keep for one reason or another. Maybe it's something you think you might need to reference sometime in the future. This brings us to our first list we're gonna set up in Tick Tick for our GTD setup, and it's called Reference. So click the plus button in the list section, put the list name in, and I like to select an emoji as well. This list should be a notes list because the items in here aren't actionable. 
In this reference list, we'll go anything that we want to keep for information. So this could be your kid's school schedules or non-actionable emails with information that you'll need to reference later. Anything that may have potentially useful information that we want to keep but doesn't have any specific action goes into your reference list. Another reason you may have captured something that's not actionable is because it's just a thought or an idea that someday, maybe, possibly, you might want to act on, but not today. So the second list we need to create within TickTick is our someday maybe list. These are actionable items, but we're not going to work on them right now. We might work on them someday, or we may never get to them. But you'll want to get them out of your head. A, to free up some of that precious mental space, and B, as a reminder for whenever that day might come that you do want to work on that. So click the plus button in the list section again. Put the name Someday Maybe in, select your emoji, and leave this list as a task list since these may potentially be actionable items in the future. There's one other place where we can put things that aren't actionable and that's right into the trash. Don't be afraid to just delete things that you don't need. You don't want to clutter up your GTD system. All right, so that covers what we should do if the item is not actionable. However, if when you ask the question, is this item actionable, the answer was yes, well, now we have a series of steps to go through. Starting by getting very specific about what the task is. And we do that by asking ourselves, what is the very next physical action to move this forward? This question will provide clarity on what actually needs to be done next. We should not have any nouns in our tasks, only very specific next actions that start with a verb. For example, when we were on the capture step, just getting things out of our head quickly, we may have written down math homework. This is a noun and not very specific. So during the clarify step, we need to revise this to something like complete questions 8 through 24 on page 51 in the math textbook. This adds some clarity around what exactly we need to complete to mark this task as done. After we've gotten specific, we'll next ask, will this task take less than two minutes? If it's only going to take two minutes, just do it right now. Don't bother filing it or scheduling it. Just get it done right now. This is David Allen's famous two minute rule. The third step is organize. Now that we've clarified our tasks and gotten some of them out of the way by using the two minute rule or by putting them in our reference or someday maybe list, or perhaps just deleting it altogether, let's move on to organizing our real tasks that we actually need to spend some time working on. So let's say we've captured in our inbox, paint the dining room. This is really not the next physical action to move this forward. We can't just immediately go paint the dining room right now. Chances are we need to pick out the paint color, buy the paint, buy the rollers and brushes and other supplies, prep the dining room, and then finally we can paint the dining room. So since this requires more than one action, it's considered a project in GTD. A project is any outcome that requires more than one action to complete. So in Tick Tick, we will create a new list for each project. For this example, I'll create a list called Paint the Dining Room. And I'll also put this list within a new folder called Projects. Next, I'll take those five actions that are required to complete this project and put them into that list. Let me quickly create two more projects so that we can get an idea of how this will look visually within TickTick once we start getting more projects. David Allen also uses something called context in GTD. These are labels that we put on tasks that reference the location that we need to be at to complete the task, or the tool we need to use, or something else related to the task. Here's some examples. 
at home for tasks that can't be completed anywhere else except at home. Paint the dining room is a good example of that. We can't paint the dining room while we're at the gym. We have to be at home. At work for a task that needs to be completed while you're physically at work. These are related to location, but we might also have some context related to tools we need to use. For example, online. This would be for tasks that require internet access. Phone calls. Computer. We might also have some related to errands. For example, grocery store. Bank. Hardware store. These contexts would be for tasks that we need to do while we're running errands and at these places. Another category of contexts are what David Allen calls agendas. These would include tasks that we need to speak to someone about. So the contexts are usually the people's name that we need to talk to. For example, Alice Bennett, John Carter. So the next time we're talking to Alice Bennett, we can quickly pull up the list of tasks that are tagged with her name, and we can get all of our questions answered at one time. Now, how do we set these contacts up in TickTick? The tag functionality is the perfect tool to use. Let's set up these contacts as tags. Remember that tags can also be nested and color coded in TickTick. So I might make a parent tag for location, a parent tag for tools, errands, and agendas, and then put the appropriate tags under those parent tags. I might also color code them accordingly. So I know that when I see a red tag, it refers to location. When I see a green tag, that refers to tools. Now a word of caution here. This is where our GTD system can really get out of hand. Because the more context we have, the more time it's gonna to take to maintain and organize our system. If we have too many, it starts to take longer to organize our tasks than to actually do them. So we need to ask ourselves, which of these contexts are really useful for us? There may be only just a couple of contexts that really matter to us personally. And those are the ones that we should set up in our GTD system. Once you've set up your tags in TickTick, Go through your projects and label any tasks that fall into those contexts. One other distinction that GTD makes is what is considered a task within your system versus what goes on your calendar. Your calendar should contain anything that must be done at a certain date and time, or at least on a certain day. And if you don't do it at that specific date and time, then you won't be able to do it. For example, a doctor's appointment. In GTD, this should not be a task in your system, but rather an event on your calendar. If your doctor's appointment is Friday at 8 a.m. and you miss that date and time, you can't just go the next day. It had to be done at that specific date and time. But if we go back to paint the dining room, we may tell ourselves we wanna work on that Saturday morning, but if something comes up on Saturday, and we're not able to start painting until Sunday afternoon, that's fine. That's an example of something that should not be on your calendar because it doesn't need to be done at a specific date and time. When David Allen wrote Getting Things Done back in 2001, he was thinking of his tasks and projects as a separate tool from his calendar. But for us, users of TickTick, we have the ability to have it all in one place since TickTick has the calendar view. And we can use the due date on our tasks to put things on our calendar. However, the key here is to remember that what needs to be scheduled with a due date is not every task. It should really only be those tasks that need to be done on a certain day or on a specific date and time. This will help us keep our calendar view clean and tick tick and allow us to see the tasks that specifically need to be done on those dates when we're looking at the calendar view.
So what about all those other tasks that are in those projects that we didn't schedule? How do we know which ones to work on? As part of the organize step, we need to go in and identify the next action for each of our projects. These are tasks that can be completed right now, or at least at our next available opportunity. There are no roadblocks for these tasks that we're aware of. In Tick Tick, we'll signify our next action by using the priority flag. If a task is a next action for a project, mark it with a high priority. Next, we'll create a custom filter and we'll call it Next Actions. Click on the plus button in the filter section. We'll have to use the advanced tab to make this work properly. Give the filter a name and select an emoji. For the criteria, we want tasks that are marked with a due date of today, so this would be tasks that are on our calendar for today. Or, the task has a priority flag set. Now this is our next actions list. It contains tasks that are scheduled for today, or are marked as a next action for a project. And this is primarily where we will be working from. This gives us the list of everything we're able to work on right now. The fourth step is reflect. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned that all the steps of GTD are equally important. And that's because people oftentimes just forget about this one. But it's just as important as the other steps in the process to make your GTD system run smoothly. The idea here is that we take the time to take a step back and review all of our tasks and all of our projects within our GTD system. David Allen recommends that we do this weekly as part of a weekly review. So in order to get a more high level view of all of our projects, I'm going to click on the projects folder and change the view to Kanban. I'll set the group by to list and the sort by to priority. This view lets me see all of my projects on one screen, and the next actions are at the top of each project. Now I can easily go through and review them. The goal is to make sure that each project is up to date. You have the right next action, you've marked items completed that are already finished, and add any other details that you may need to. Another goal of this step is to assess our priorities. Maybe something that we had started as a project has lost momentum, it needs to be moved back to our Someday Maybe list. Speaking of which, we will also want to review our Someday Maybe list. Maybe there are things we need to add to this list. Or maybe now is a good time to move one of those items into an active project to begin working on. The Reflect step is important because it helps us trust that everything in our system is up to date and accurate. It also gives us another opportunity to get rid of any thoughts or ideas that we've had in our head that we've been clinging to and get them into our system and organized. The final step is engage. The last thing for us to do is actually get things done. In this step, we are using our GTD system and specifically our next actions filter to get the list of things that we can work on right now. We're making decisions based on context, time available, our energy levels, and as David Allen says, relying a bit on our own tuition to decide which tasks from our next actions filter we should work on next. Okay, we've covered it. How to use the getting things done methodology within the Tick Tick app. Well, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.